Carol and Kevin Shanahan, the new owners of Port Vale Football Club. How does that sound? Unbelievable. Yeah, it's overwhelming really, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely unbelievable. I mean, it's been true for about an hour or so, but uh, it hasn't registered at all as yet. Even with the pictures, with the shirt, with your name on the back, it's, it's no. such a strange feeling, isn't it? And I, I, a feeling I guess you've, you've never, ever experienced before. No, never. And I, it's been going on for so long. <laughs> years. Years, years. I mean, literally years we've been at this. And to suddenly have a day when it's happened, is, it's impossible to take on in, in just a short space of time. Well, I bought this dress in Atlanta on a business trip years ago, and black, white, and gold. And I thought, right, I'm going to wear this the day that we buy Veil, because we were trying to buy it there, weren't yeah. we? That's and three or four years ago. And I've worn it today. It's a very old dress. <laughs> <laughs> you're sat in the bike car stand now, and you're looking around Vale Park. You've got your family here. Just, if you can, what is the feeling right now, looking around this ground, knowing that? You are the new proud owners of it. it it's unbel for me. It's unbelievably humbling. Yeah. Because I'm trying to take this on board. You look at this place. You're overwhelmed by the history of it. And one of the things that becomes very clear to me is that nobody owns a place like Port Vale or a club like Port Vale. You are merely custodians of it for a little period of time. This thing's been going since two centuries ago, 1870 something or other. It's just... It's You're just, gonna have to learn the year. Well, <laughs> does it matter? Because <laughs> there is dispute about when it was actually formed. Okay. So we'll be careful on that. Um, but, you know, you look around, the weight of history just sits on your head really and pushes you down. But uh, it is just a humbling and magnificent feeling all at the same time. I can sort of see you, especially with you, Carol, you're sort of looking around and yeah. you're sort of just wondering, you know, it's, it's actually happened. I'm partly looking at the to-do list yeah. <laughs> now, which is quite overwhelming. But for me, we talk about the Port Vale family and there's lots of the Port Vale family that have, have disappeared over the years. And one of our first aims is to get those back. And to me, Vale Park is the family home. It's the Port Vale family home, and it's, it's getting it back to the pride. So when we have away supporters coming in here, we're, we're proud of, of what we've got, that it's in the best condition that it can be. And it's gonna take a long time. There's a lot of work to be done on this, this stadium. I'd, I'd just like to say, I thought the, the Port Vale fans in general have been unbelievable. Yeah. We went to, uh, where do we go? Berry. Berry on uh, Saturday. last Saturday. And, and there were about a thousand fans there, best part of a thousand fans. And this was a team that had just squeaked clear of relegation. There was nothing to play for. They are phenomenal. I mean, if we can just tap into that yeah. and, and give these people a bit of what they want, it'll be unbelievable the place here. I mean, I mean the we're sat in the bike cars looking at this. It is going to be seriously, seriously, seriously. As you said, though, the fans are phenomenal. They yeah. turned up in their numbers. and yeah. You've been going home and away mm -hmm. the, the past few years as well and certainly we've mentioned before the Cheltenham game was definitely a turning point for you so what have the past few weeks been building up you've been working very closely with Colin Garlick he's been working long hours you've yeah. both been working long hours on this what has this been like and what and what was the turning point why was it at the turning point Cheltenham was, Chel it? Cheltenham was definitely the turning point yeah. um, but before we talk about that we just must talk about Colin because yeah. he has been uh, behind the scenes he has been the biggest servant for for Port Bell he's been amazing Absolutely. Uh, and, I'd uh, like to just echo that. Yeah. He's been phenomenal. And, and he has worked night and day on it, hasn't he? Has, he? Yeah. He's, and he's always been available to speak to, and I'm really looking forward to working with him. Um, yeah. I think he's going to be really good to start to put some of his ideas in, into place. I think he's going to really enjoy it. Yeah. For the first time, you'll see his shoulders go down a bit. I think yeah. we all are. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but Cheltenham, um, we went to, to Cheltenham and we happened to sit next to some of the black and gold. Oh, yeah. um, behind the gold. Behind, yeah. we behind the gold, but near the black, some black and gold supporters. And we were talking to them and saying, look, you know, if there's any way we can help. In the background, nice and quiet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, this is in the background, nice and quiet. Um, and they were saying that the problem is that there wasn't an alternative, that they could try and persuade Norman to go, but there was no alternative if he did. 
so therefore that was limited to, to what could happen and we drove home and we well, looked we got, at we, it Cheltenham's not far from the motorway the M5 down there isn't it and we got as far as the M5 and we're going up that and we kind of spoke to each other and and Sue and Sue good old Sue um, and we thought you know we'd, we'd not resigned we'd, we'd looking forward to a quiet and peaceful life and we thought we, we just can't leave this, can we? Because there were so many... Phone's not going on. It's something yeah, happened no, on your phone. There's lots of good wishes <laughs> coming through. <laughs> it was, it was, there were so many good people behind the goals at Cheltenham. And, you thought, and they kept coming up to us, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, uh, Just asking us to help them um, and, and to help their club. And you thought, you just, you just can't leave that. Do you know? That's something I think the fans can, can receive off you. Yeah. The fact that how much you care and how much that you love the club, yeah. it's a huge factor for the pair of you, isn't it? Yeah. It's well, we the love people. Bursland, it's the people. We? It's the people of Burst. Look at yeah. Burstland Festival yesterday. Yeah, we were there. Uh, we? And it's the, the people are amazing. And we always wanted to help Burstland. And I've always had this thing that a successful football club helps its community. And so we thought, right, well, OK, if we can make Port Vale successful, mm. then that will help. Um, like ST6, you know, this, yeah, this the whole, whole area, isn't it? Yeah, and that's what we're going to do. I mean, first and foremost, it's a football club, and yeah. success on the pitch is what it's all about. But other than that, it's also, as I say, it's the family, and and it's the support that it, it can give to the people who live in this area, in Burslem, in Tunstall. I, I just, I'm just looking beyond you out at the pitch and just thinking speedy here. I mean, last, yeah. last week, came yeah. out sort of 40 years tribute but if you look at the pitch it's unbelievable oh, we, we were at Bury on Saturday it was nowhere near as good as no. that was it no he just uh, he, I, I think he liked to hear that as well I think it's it, true well I think in he was laughing at it you know I saw him yeah, I think he was laughing at the pitch well most away matches we go we look at the pitch and go well it's not as good as ours can I just point out that you should never ever drink alcohol on the terraces this is a one day I think this is a special day to be yeah, doing that it's the just, only day. just talking about the fans there how, how good they are and you know how much they mean to the club how important is it now to unite this club together oh. it's a team 100%. effort and you know we're all together now moving forward it, it is because to get the full experience of a football match you've got to be surrounded by people and to get the people back the people that have left I've been Stoke on Trent all of the time and you hear people saying oh I, I'm a Vale fan and you go to the match no I used to Eustace well, the it's the is. Eustace, isn't it? And we want to get the Eustace back. If you used to come, come back, you know, and it's our club. Um, when I say ours, I mean all the Vale fans. Because people keep saying, oh, you know, you and Kevin own the club. Well, no, we don't, you know. I, I've, been, I've been saying to the people, fans. it's not that at all. We are merely the custodians for a short period of time. If you look at the length that uh, Port Vale's been going. So we should all be humble in a sense, yeah, and just rejoice as to what we can, what we all together can potentially do here. Yeah. And it's it's been quite a difficult few seasons. It's safe to say. Can I just say, if everybody <laughs> who is messaging Kevin buys a season ticket, we're going to be okay because that's There's a lot be some of atmosphere. Here, You've never there? been so popular. No, 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 no. It's, it's a nice change for me. <laughs> yeah. But just talk, just talking about the fact as well, they they've had a. Difficult few years at, it, at this club, haven't they? Unbelievable. I mean, yes, well, that's a question. Yeah, he is. Guess he was. He's saying he's <laughs> no, 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 for the fans. I'm just saying it's <laughs> unbelievable. The people who have continued to turn up here. Yeah. You know, and dear God, do we want to try collectively to give them something? Yeah. Yeah, because just just of bowing in appreciation to what they've done. I mean, people have turned up here. Crap football. Yeah. I mean, I could phrase that properly, but that's. Yeah. That's how it's been. Woeful. Woeful. That's Woeful. a good word. Woeful. Yeah. So, it's a posture, but it hasn't it? been. Woeful. I mean, it hasn't been since, particularly since Notts County. Oh no, no. I mean, and there was we certainly went, a turn of atmosphere there oh, in Notts we County. Notts we've, County. We've mentioned it plenty of times with the gaffer, and, and and as you say, Kevin, you guys were there in the crowd, and well, there was we went, something we went, different there. Well, we went public the day before. Yeah. yeah. So on the Friday we went public. Yeah. Two, two men described me as a young lady right. under Craze and Grumble, <laughs> and Kevin said, well, they've not been to Specsavers. Um, but we met one of them at Notts yeah, County, we did, and yeah. we had a hug. So, yeah. Yeah. But it, the atmosphere was completely different in Notts County to how it had there been. There were 1,400 Bell fans at Notts County. Yeah. Brilliant I mean, atmosphere. It was it, superb. You know, where, where does that come from, when the thing's in danger of disappearing out the league? I mean, 
the Vale fans are seriously special. Yeah. And and need a lot paying back into them yeah. in some fashion or other. And now, with you guys at the helm now here at Port Vale Football Club, what can they expect from you? What are, what are your visions and goals for this magnificent club? Honesty. Yeah. And integrity. Let's play it straight. Don't mm. let's fool the fans. Well, don't, let's say then. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't, don't let's say we're going to be in the Premiership next week. We're not. I mean, my belief <laughs> is that you always tend to fall short of where you aim. So I don't think we should be aiming for mid-table. I think we should be aiming for the top. But, you know, if we're aiming for the top in the first season, we end up in the middle, so be it. But we'll go and give it the best thing ever. Yeah. It's a process, isn't it? No? Yeah, 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 yeah. There's a lot of bit rebuilding of this club to do. There's a lot that's... Um, I mean, Carol, been, just to interrupt, Carol's yeah. been round with some of our serious sort of... Um, Maintenance, Maintenance facilities sort of people. Facilities mm. people. Making a list of, I mean, <laughs> you wouldn't believe the list of things there are to do here. It's, it's, it's amazing. And, you know, we make a list, we all agree what it is, and we start at one and we try and work our way through. But the more fans that come in, the more money we'll have to, to do the list quicker. But there's a lot to do. Also, volunteering. I mean, if people yeah. want to volunteer and help. Oh. Um, then please get in touch with us. Yeah. Uh, there should be a, a, an email set up of Carol at Port Vale Co UK, which we'll put on the, on the website. Yeah. Um, please get in touch. Because there's loads of people in and around here who've got all sorts of skills. Yeah. And, that, and that leads me on to my next question. Yeah. How important is this community here? Oh. How, how, what, can that, what can this brilliant, atmospheric, passionate, community do well, for Port we, Vale. We, we came in here a few years ago, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And we sort of fell in here and we came because it was a great place with big car parks, great building, all that sort the of thing. The next door for Synectics. Yeah, mm -hmm. next door. That's where we were. And um, where we are. They're a bit like Creature Comforts, aren't they? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but, but that was our first real exposure to Burslem. And over the years, we've understood more and more. So... Carol and the MP Ruth Smeath have been really uh, inspirational in we've now formed a charity the Hub Group isn't Hub, it? Hub Foundation. Hub Foundation H-U-B-B -B, which stands which is the Arabic for love. That's the word Arabic for love. Thank you Carol. Um, and uh, <laughs> and uh, you can edit all this out can't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm leaving it in. Now this is next year's <laughs> outtakes. <laughs> and uh, and it started off as something sort of quite small and Ruth Smith said she wanted some, the MP said she wanted some documentation and all this sort of thing. But oh, the bloody thing grew, didn't it? And then last year it grew again and we've gone from doing the... We did 6,000 meals last year to, to children and families in across Stoke on Trent. And th this now, I mean, we have a, a fabulous kitchen here. So we'll be cooking food from here to feed kids in the, in the school holidays. Um, it, yeah. was, it was a very expensive way to get a kitchen. Yeah. But, <laughs> but, but that has been, so we came in here, we did lots of sort of charity things sort of beneath the surface, a lot of them. We got bullied into doing this, um, feeding all the kids and no, it's not just feeding them because if you feed them, they, they won't come. But if, if you put on games and sports and all sorts of things, they'll come and oh, by the way, you get fed. So that seems to have been working well, doesn't it? It's working really well. And um, so, in a way, Port Vale is... It's an extension of what we were already doing. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's, and I think the fans will be able to tell straight away what a great attitude that you have yeah. coming to Port Vale and, and the plans that you have and, and the feeling you have towards the fans. Yeah. What is your message now to them? If, if they were sat in front of you, what, what would you want to say to them? Well, come and join in. Come and, yeah, come and have fun. Come and yeah. shout a lot. Yeah, yeah. Come here. and promote Port Vale yeah. uh, around the city. And, you know, I don't think we should be apologetic about being oh, Port Vale. I'm really, really proud. You know, I mean, I, I wear my scarf with, with pride wherever I go. And I'm behind her all the way. Hi, <laughs> <laughs> Here's Colin. Colin, Colin, come and say hello. Colin Garlic, come on. <laughs> can, can you fit him on? Yeah, I'm not saying he's big, it's not, but... So it was Colin's birthday yesterday. <laughs> you can see by the 60 badge. I mean, <laughs> Colin, what, what has it been like for you the past few weeks? It's, me and you have been working closely on this as well. It's, it's been rather hectic to say the least, but how pleased are you now to, to get this over the line? 
it's been an amazing month. It's been really a tough month. Um, and I, yeah, I mean, yeah, I'd like to thank these good people um, for making it so easy along the way, but um, also for my staff, like yourself, Estelle, Tracy, Steve, people who've put work into getting us to where we actually are now. Um, it, it's been a tough month, but it's all been worth it today. 60th birthday yesterday, is this the yeah. best present you could have wished for? Got a double celebration, um, and now what we do is we look forward. Uh, I think it's important. It's always important to look back and learn lessons from that, but very important that we look forward um, and, and we, we move on. Um, it is what it is. We've got that future in front of us, um, and so we need to make the most of it. Um, that these two people are going to bring new lease of life to, to the club, and we need to really get behind them. They've clearly put their money where their mouth is. There's no doubt about that. I know about that, um, uh, and I thank them for that. The Port Vale supporters should do that. And now I'm really joining them to say, Luke, let, get behind the club, uh, come on down and give us your, su your support wherever you possibly can. Um, let's t turn this around. And just finally, we were all in the office there when the news broke and Carol and Kevin mm. came back from the solicitors. How big is this now for the club, as well as atmosphere amongst the fans, but as well as the staff members as well? No, this is massive, uh, you know, for, for the football club. Um, you know, we, we've, we've not been in a good place, um, you know, results-wise, whatever you want to look at. Uh, but th this, this is all about looking forward for me. Uh, new beginnings, new era, and we do that um, with a lot of optimism. Uh, and th this is for supporters. I've always said that it doesn't matter who owns a football club, it belongs to the supporters. Yeah, yeah. These people know that. We know that, and that's what we've got to make sure that happens. So um, it is up the veil, and we're going forward. Well, congratulations, guys. Carol and Kevin Shanahan, the new owners of Port Vale Football Club. Bless you.